the hero of mythology, defeating the dragon, has an analogue in various cultures. This is Indra killing Vritra. This is Saint George killing the dragon. In the mass unconscious, this hero is very clearly identified, and it does not matter at all what the ego is called in certain cultures. This is the very first angel, the most beloved hero, defeating the dragon with some kind of weapon. This weapon is always featured. In some myths it is a spear, in others it is a magic whip, hammer, magic bow. In certain myths, this weapon is something psychic, an arrow that finds and strikes a target wherever it is. The third eye, from where a ray is emitted that burns evil, lightning that strikes the enemy. If you see the signified behind the symbolism, then the hero is the spirit of the seeker, the student. A tool is a method, the totality of all that he wins the victory with. And the dragon is the base animal in us. In one Upanishad yoga is compared with a magic axe, with which a student can dissect ignorance, as if to cut off everything. An interesting myth about Amaran. In ancient Iranian Amaran Darajan sounds like this, Amir Andarjan. The lord of all that is. Let me remind the reader of Nestan Derjan from the poem of Shota Rustaveli, in ancient Iranian, does not exist in this world. Amir is the master. Nest is the same as the Russian no, in the same ancient Indo-European language, which has a commonality, from Ireland, the land of the Aryans, to India and Iran, Aryavarta, Aryana are ancient names meaning the same, the land of the Aryans. The myth of Amaran is a collection of folk tales, very reminiscent of the Indian Vedas, and the ancient Iranian Avesta. Three brothers, Amaran, Badri and Usup, have three symbolic colors familiar from fairy tales, mythology, from the poem, The Knight in the Panther's Skin, white, red and black. The colors of the substance, its three components of meaning, energy and matter. Let me remind you that the ancient flag of Georgia consisted of these three colors. Amran fights three dragons, defeats white and red, and the black swallows him. His brothers have sun and moon signs on their bodies, the colors are red and white. And the symbolic color of Amran is black. Let me remind you that, for example, Krishna, the sage who expounds the Gita, means black, dark, unmanifest. And Arjuna is white, manifested. Since all my life I have studied how the myths of the East are deciphered, I decided to do it with Georgian folk wisdom. I wanted to write another post today, but did not find the poem by Vajip Amaran in the English translation. And it is impossible to translate poetry by a translator. While I continue my post, I want to reach out to my friends, classmates, fellow students and the friends of my friends. While studying Zen and meditation, I found that there was a lot of emphasis on physical labor. Friends who visited the monastery for a couple of weeks talked about obedience, a ritual accepted in all spiritual communities, where work is divided between everyone, someone gathers mushrooms, someone, firewood, someone is carrying water. Friends, who did not like physical labor as such, said that there, in the monastery, it was this ritual of obedience that purified their psyche, and helped to move away from the city nervous tension, to switch to the contemplative life and prayer mood of the monks. All this is consistent with what I have been studying all my life. Karma Yoga is the path to perfection, relying on your work, for the good of the world. As for the world, I can't say, but I propose to rectify the situation that I found on the net, looking for Vajip, in English. There is very little of it, so that I felt a little overweight. All countries have government institutions and foundations that digitize old books. In our country, this question is raised shamefully. I discovered that there are a couple of advertising links for the works of Vajip where you can't read or download anything, they offer you to pay and become a student of something there. My dear friends, suddenly I realized that this is the obedience that each of us can practice, like Zen students rewriting ancient treatises. We all have Georgian books at home, the real value of our people, the true wealth. It is unacceptable that we are lagging behind other countries, that our brilliant poets, writers and philosophers are not digitized, not translated into other languages, and if something is translated, then it is not freely available, but turned into a means of profit. I just wanted to download a couple of verses of poem Amarin, which I have in Russian and many people got to know this genius thanks to my posts. I propose to see how this can be done. Get involved, 
Because if I am not alone, but there will be many of us, spending a few minutes every day, like asceticism, like obedience, for the sake of our homeland, we can change the situation. I assure you that the posts you wrote about our great ancestors are exactly what the younger generation needs, looking at the internet as a playground created for entertainment. I appeal to those of you who do not think so, and are ready to spend time and effort, taking their part of the responsibility, for the conversation is about our fate as a country. Who will we be? What can we take from all the diversity that the world offers? Only a superficial attitude and an endless get-together, or, hiding the possibility. After all, we are sure that we are a little more gifted than other peoples who surpass us in number. This is nature's compensation, small nations should make more efforts so that humanity pays attention to them. We don't need more. Let's help each other in this common cause. We will support, we will not criticize, we will praise any effort of the young, if we want everything, we will be able to do significant things. Let's try it, maybe it will work out. A few minutes a day is not a great sacrifice. Lay out the verse, no need to frighten foreigners with long texts. Take a photo, a verse or two, from an old book, everyone has these, re-read by our grandfathers. Upload a photo, add a translation. Add a few words, more memories, not philology. By doing this, we will find friends, we will be taken for equal. Facebook helps small businesses, but when it comes to spirituality, communication, self-expression, you will find that they help you even more. Facebook is made for that. The program itself is designed so that it gives priority to such posts. I have gained experience in studying, practiced, I know what I'm talking about. Try it and you will find that almost any reader immediately shows sympathy for your idea, and the machine mind is unusually friendly to such undertakings. Because Facebook was conceived precisely for this. Your profile is your virtual image. Everything else, pages, business, advertising, all this is a superstructure. But the usual posts, not about a product or a policy, but exactly the ones I am talking about, this is also the interest of Facebook, however, as well as other similar companies. For example, Google spends enormous resources digitizing all the literature of the Earth. But, I'm not talking about a mechanical process. No one has time, and I do not think that some hypothetical German or Australian will crawl into the library of the Georgian Parliament to read poorly translated texts. A long word is said shortly, do not forget our folk wisdom. We quote part of our classics, a couple of verses, and briefly explain our vision, in another language, which one you know best. That's all. The whole world will gradually begin to comprehend that we are the same worthy and cultured people, like those who, in addition, have military strength and economic might. So each of us will lay a brick in the future of our homeland. The main thing is purity of thought, everything else is not important. By doing things together, we can learn more easily. We will learn to help each other in this matter, share each other's posts, for the good, the common good. Every like is recorded in the machine mind and the post gets more views. So even sympathizers can participate with the tap of a finger. This is the service to one's homeland, not with a glass in hand, but really, quietly, without the duplicity that politicians and businessmen are engaged in. Facebook is great for this very purpose. Here they read, comment and share each other's thoughts, uniting in groups. I invite you. If you are sincere, friends and compatriots will help you, spread support with comments. Do not write about verses that you do not remember, start with those that your subconscious mind has memorized, because they sound in unison with it. I appeal to my friends who speak other languages. Everything said for you is also relevant. Especially if your homeland is small in number, you need to compensate for this with culture so that they will know about it, despite the small army and economy. I wish all of us spirituality, and the feeling that we have made a small contribution to building the future, our country or the whole world, because in the end we are all people, and we can enrich each other culturally. Vajip said that each nation should bring its uniqueness to the common treasury of the world. Think about all of this and give it a try, and you will immediately feel a degree of satisfaction that no business achievement would ever have. After all, it is better to acquire the name than any other capital.
and in that world, our ancestors will evaluate us not by our personal achievements, but by how we continued what we received from them, and how we passed it on to the next generations. Now, I will finish the interrupted post, because it all started in my childhood, when I was presented with a book about Amarin. I studied it, studied the mythology of other peoples, and found that in the Vedas these three brothers are called Mitra, Varuna and Aryaman. The symbol of the first is day, the second is night, and the third denotes a friend of people. Prometheus, who brought fire to people, despite the prohibition of the gods, according to Greek authors, is chained in the Caucasus. This is one, common hero, a hero with many faces. This myth is deciphered in the same way as other myths, and opens more and more philosophical depths. In one version, Amarin has a magical, golden dagger with which he was born, a gift from the mother goddess. He always has this dagger with him, it is, as it were, part of his nature. The dragon, who has swallowed the hero, flies to a certain sacred place where there is a giant post. The dragon wraps itself around the pillar, clamps its tail in its mouth, breaking the victim. In Eastern mythology, Vishnu sleeps on a gigantic snake that encircles the entire manifested, also clamping its tail in its teeth. Ouroboros, a tail-biting dragon, is the oldest symbol of infinity. The swallowed Amaran forgets himself, and forgets about his divine weapon, given to him by God, as a sign of his favor. This is a golden, magic sword, which is, as it were, his integral weapon, a part of himself. In many myths, the hero partially loses the battle with the dragon, in some he even temporarily turns into a dragon. So it happens with Amaran, he is inside, like a biblical character, swallowed by Kit. And Amaran forgetting himself his power, magic dagger, does not try to free himself. He resigns himself to fate. But one of the brothers shouts reminds the hero of the dagger. In the dragon's belly, the hero remembers the magic dagger, cuts the dragon's side, and comes out into the light. After that, the dragon could never completely heal this wound. Earlier, when he swallowed the sun, people found themselves in darkness for many years, until the dragon himself released the sun, for one reason or another. But after the incident with Amarin, according to the legend, the sun does not stay long in the dragon's stomach, for Amarin cut the exit. Probably swallowed Amarin as a human soul languishing in the fetters of flesh. The soul does not remember its strength. We need someone who will cry out to the soul, a spiritual teacher. And then the soul can use the power originally inherent in it, in the myth it is the golden dagger that the hero has. Gold in myths is something immaterial, spiritual. Having cut the dragon, Amarin, as it were, gave others an example, a way. By following this method, others can also achieve freedom, end captivity. The sun is the truth, a symbol of knowledge. Every effort we make echoes in people's hearts when it comes to wealth like the thoughts of great sages. One post that drew public attention to the unethical behavior of certain firms made a difference. At least for me, I received the verse, in Georgian and in English, and I'm proud to share it with you and the whole world. With his enormous body, a man appears on the cliff the smelting bile of the heart wordlessly simmers in his chest. An insensible chain atop his arms writhes about like a snake and the gossamer about his eyes have laced up a spider's web. Oblivious to this slave are men below and sky above, they hear not of him, the slayer of ogres and devils. He may need his sword in hand, as he stares about the valley, the mountains and valleys resound with rumbling, as he strikes the rope about his head. The earth trembles, the clouds are tossed in ferment and surging gloom, the elegant speckled stars. Amarani Vaja 1884